Yo! In Matt's garage again, screwing up. I got my boy Greg with me today. We're messing everything up. Actually, we're trying to fix what's already messed up. So, moral story, Greg's cleaning. We got it apart, kicking butt. You know how it goes. Getting dirty, getting done. My boy Greg, I think he's losing it though. He's had too much uh, parts fumes or something, parts cleaner fumes. So, and then on top of this, I gotta make fun of my boy Matt. Like, he normally has like the jankiest tools and then he has like the most expensive, nicest tools. And I don't mean that in like money wise, but he's either got something that like came from the slow boat from China and it's like a piece of junk and it'll break the first time you use it or it's really nice. Well, his parts cleaner switch was broke. We had to hotwire it to get it to work. So look at this trap. Hey, what are you drinking out of? Oh, a minion cup for the minion. You're like the dark minion though. The look at minion. you, you're like the dark man minion. Come over to the cleaning oh. side. Yeah, look at that. We need to paint that hat yellow. You look creepy like, I don't, yeah, either way. So, look at this hot wiring. This was a switch that was in there. I don't know if you can see it or not. It was all broken to pieces and stuff and we had to get all redneck and hot wire this thing. How funny is that? So it's just plugged into the wall now. So we're just gonna leave it running until Matt gets back. So he'll just come in and it'll just be running. It's gonna be pretty entertaining. But we'll have clean rotors and everything will be fixed on the Jeep. <laughs> What's happening? What are you doing? I'm working on, what is this, the Command Cheap. Command Cheap? Yep. Checking it out. It's the first time I've seen it in person. We're going to change out some wheel bearings for, uh, for Matt and go from there. See what happens. I know. Y'all should see how shit wrecked this other side is over here, which some of y'all uh, at some point may see how much trouble it was to get all the lockout off. It was all seized up on there, but look how black. If you notice this rust ring right here, these were replaced just a few years ago. They, they weren't even painted, so these were new. So you look how rusty and gnarly and black and burnt and ugly all this was. It was not good. So, but Matt got uh, new bearings and new lockouts and new seals, and we're going to take it all apart and uh, put all new uh, spindle bearings in on the inside because. See what really happens here, you may understand, you may not know how all this works. Some, some of you don't because a lot of you just have unit bearings, but this axle shaft is right here and there's a bunch of seals inside here. They all have to work together uh, in unison to keep the water out of the bearings. So the water doesn't come in where you think it would right here, where this, this is the wheel seal, this is a bearing right here. The water comes through between the shaft, you see where it wiggles? The water comes through here and contaminates this bearing first and then it goes through and contaminates this one so whenever this happens this bearing is just totally roached and this one back here is typically halfway decent just needs to be cleaned so that's what we're doing right now i'm going to continue taking it apart and getting it all cleaned up i like the uh fridge tickler is that the microphone yeah it's to stop the wind the wind when you blow it you know, when it's blowing oh yeah it's called a cattail or something like that cat nip or something not nip something yeah so show show the world how the easiest way to get the back bearing and seal off without a crowbar, <laughs> without a crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you would normally do this i don't know what greg was really doing there but he was going vigilante with a crowbar Slide it all the way on. There you go. Now where's your first, where's your nut at? Where's the nut you took off? There you go. Just spin one of them back on. Just ever so slightly. I've never done it this way. You hadn't? Oh, this is the best way in the world to do it. Normally I just put that nut back on when I get the first bearing out, but that side of air was so roached we had to hammer it off. Swear to goodness. No joke. We were beating on the rotor to get the other side off. It was so seized on there, as you can tell. All right. I'm gonna grab it and yank it towards you one good gusto. This is another drone. So so Drones, boss hog, tips and tricks on how to get your rear bearing and seal out. That's true. This is the first time I've ever heard this tip. Yeah, so give her a gusto. 
Yahtzee. Look there. Tell me that ain't the shiznit. That is the shiznit. That's the redneck I'd way. I've never to take done it that away. way. It's way easy, right? That is. You can reuse the seal this way. It doesn't tear the seal up. That's the real advantage to it. Ah. See that? You just put your nut back on a little bit. All you uh, Unibaron people out there <laughs> have no beating idea. on us right now because y'all don't get to play in the grease like a bunch of piggies. So, but that's another little trick. That is. Old man Greg. He was the guy that put out the fire or assisted in putting the fire out on the CJ drastically that day. Right. Don't throw it! Mr. No. CrossFit. <laughs> Holy cow! The rotor's loose on the hub. Damn it, we've been beating on it for freaking 10 minutes. Still wobbling. Uh oh. It's, it's getting tight though. It's getting there. Keep going. Let's do it. Let's do it. Ten minutes. We took it off. The rotor was loose, and the studs hold it to the hub assembly. So we started tapping together. It didn't work. So we knocked all the damn studs out, and now we're knocking them all back in. And finally, it's tight. Man, Get these two. Again. Man, I like it. Woohoo! Yahtzee. And you shake it. To say? Yahtzee. You shake it and go 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 Good job, Greg. Good job, CrossFit. That's it. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> Seriously. No joke. I figured out why we're having so much trouble out of the bearings on these. Um, I've had this theory for a long time. I had no idea that this is what was in this, but I've told several of my friends, there's no way I'd run that because there's no protection, blah, blah, blah. We got them apart and all of a sudden I went, holy cow, no wonder. So from certain companies, they make a Delrin piece right here. It's like a bushing, it has this little flange on it right here and it has, it's all in there. It's just Delrin, it's hard, hard, hard plastic bushing right there. It's got some little grooves right here, I guess, to hold the mud in, right? But moral story, we're in like East Tennessee, okay? So, so much mud in East Tennessee. Just tons and tons of mud in East Tennessee. Greg knows we go through a puddle about every 50 feet. Uh, if it's winter time, it's probably about every 10 feet. But moral story, we have tons of mud. So you have to have the proper protection in here. These right here, in my opinion, are for out west or somewhere in real dry condition, somewhere where you're just doing a hardcore rock crawling or something, and you physically are going to dodge every muddy spot you can ever. In East Tennessee, if you're going to ride trails, you're going to hit mud. It's just plain and simple. Well, nobody loves mud unless you are feeling real rowdy that day and want to give her heck. But these Delrin spacers right here uh, replace bump -a bump this guy. This guy is what you call a spindle bearing. It's bearings full of grease, rides in there, sits inside this right here, and your actual shaft, it's what keeps your actual shaft centered right here where the U-joints are at. It keeps it riding smooth right there. Well, this guy does fantastic if you have the other components to it, which Greg can vouch for. 90% of the time, people don't. They just put. I don't. Yeah, he doesn't even. We open the box, he goes, I really need those. That's why I keep replacing bearings. <laughs> Moral story, you need all these components. There's a big metal ring that goes on this too. I got it over in the box. And should, we gonna grab that red box, whatever. So, um, but there's several pieces to this puzzle. And if you don't have them all, they don't work. Um, Dana 60, Dana 44, anything that has double bearings like this is gonna have a setup like this. And the way this works, here it is. This is the slinger. This slinger is like super crucial. It goes on your axle shaft. This guy right here slides over top of it. You can see how tight of a fit it is. If you don't have this slinger right here that pops on there, 
this doesn't fit on your axle shaft worth a damn. And for two, it doesn't have anything to sit against. Like this pushes against this slinger right here. This slinger fits perfectly like this, keeps all the roots, mud, all that. And this is what keeps the pressure down on this seal right here. This seal is, it's got a flange. It takes pressure to push down on it. Well, this tightens down like that right there. And keep in mind, all this tightens down because you're supposed to run the C-clip on the end. If you don't run the C-clip on the end of the axle shaft, it doesn't pull everything together. So if you don't have the C-clip, it doesn't pull it together. So this pulls it down, pulls it tight, and therefore, this little washer dude goes on, it's beveled, goes on a certain way, because you're the way the axle shaft's made, it's beveled to so give that self a little there. And then this little seal goes on kind of backwards than what you think, it mates to this surface. And this seal right here is the most important one, this little guy right here. It pushes on this seal right here on the axle shaft, and this bearing rides right against that seal like so. Well, I have figured out in my life that if you drive this bearing down too far into the spindle, then this little guy will just sit in there and never touch this guy, okay? And that's just like a machining flaw in there. This guy will just sit right there, but it'll never actually touch. So it can't actually compress. It's the same way. It needs to compress like this does to where it keeps all the mud out of this bearing. So therefore these will wear out. And like I said earlier, when that wears, the mud goes through here, bypasses your axle shaft and comes out here and your front bearing gets destroyed. You'll see pictures online if you punch in Dana, Dana 44, Dana 30, whatever, outer bearing destroyed. Like people lose wheels. It'll melt, it'll melt this. It'll get so hot because the bearing goes bad. It'll melt this. This whole piece will pop off. A whole wheel flies off the vehicle. All because these little seals were either A, not in there, or B, not properly installed. So when you install this perfectly, you start driving it down. You just set this dude down in there inside that spindle which is gonna sit right here. And when it sits right in there just perfectly, nice and flush, it's too low. So it should be taller, should be proud of the surface. If you get it down there where it's nice and flush, it's never gonna to touch. So it should be just slightly proud where you set that on there and you can feel that it's touching. So that's my experience. And I was telling Greg this today, I took my friend in the park to put the ring opinion in. It hadn't been touched in three years. How often you mess with yours? I've messed with it three, I've put bearings in three times in two years. Exactly. My old 44, before I figured this out, I was putting bearings in it two, three times a year. Um, I rode a lot, but again, I was doing a lot. Moral story, these little Delrin dudes right here, they're great if you're going to be out west or something, stay out of the mud, rock them, run them, whatever. East Tennessee mud, not cool. Half the reason I did this, Matt's not here again. We're showing Matt what the issue is because he's not really understand. I told him to order these parts, so he ordered them. We're about to install them, so he'll never even see it. So, but there it is, folks. If you're gonna go out west and ride forever, rock this. I'm sure, it'll work great. East Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, Carolina, east of the Mississippi, Kentucky. Do not run them. Everybody knows that. I have a feeling some people don't. But then, if you can, make sure you run a good USA. Spicer band. Hmm. Quality. Love it. Say hi, Greg. Hi, Greg. I was about to say, you got to say hi, Greg. <laughs> you can't just go, hello. Uh -huh. Okay, so we did it, right? We're going to show you real quick. All right, let's start this over. Greg, drone. Dana 60 spindle bearing install. Proper way to do it. No one's ever going to watch this. It's not going to be the best views or whatever. But this is a trick, man. I ain't going to lie. I bring this up to people who've been doing this shit for 40 years. They do not know what I'm talking about. Look here. Bearing install. We are talking about right there. Boom, yeah, boom, yeah. I don't know if you can see this or not. This hole is huge. It's ginormous. It goes way down in there. Like, look how deep that is. It is that deep. That's how deep it is. This bearing is not that deep. So you can drive this all the way down in there, okay? Because no one has the special installer that they used back in the day. Everybody just taps them in the way we did there. 
So you could drive this in all the way down in there. You'll think you're doing something great. Yeah, you did. You put your spindle airing in. It's pretty freaking awesome. You pushed it all the way in there. Great. Good job. Proud of you. And then what you do is you grab this and your kit and you go put every bit of it on. This is how it goes on the axle shaft right here. This hammer's on the axle shaft. Your seal goes on. That goes there. And this slides over the axle shaft. You put all four of these components on and you're just as happy as hell. You're like, I got it all on there. I'm golden. And then you take your spindle, shkunk, slide it on there. You don't know why you keep going through at wheel bearings. Question is, why do you keep going through wheel bearings? Because this dude is like right here. So this little seal that's supposed to be doing all this work rides back, sits on the bearing, and nothing ever touches. You understand what I'm saying? It doesn't make the contact. So if you don't install that dude correctly, like Greg did here, tap that dude in where it's just barely proud. See, he's touching it. This guy right here goes on and it's sitting there and you should just barely feel it. Just barely feel the contact. That's what you want. That's the proper engagement, that right there. Now when the rest of this goes on, like so, and it pushes down and this pushes down, everything is properly sealed as long as you put the C-clip on the axle shaft, okay? I know there's plenty of people out there who go, you don't need that junk. I was one of those guys, man. I did it for years. People, the old timers told me you didn't need that junk. Okay, I didn't put it in. Going through bearings left and right, going through bearings left and right, figured all this out, figured it out. Also, putting the C-clip in holds that U-joint in the middle of, the, of your ball joints or your kingpin and your bearing. So if that thing's floating around and you're turning, it wants to bind up a little bit. Yeah, sure, it'll work in and work out and it'll make it wherever it needs to be. But if you have that C-clip in there, it holds that thing right in, right in parallel where it needs to be. So when you're turning your wheel back and forth, that doesn't want to bind up because it's not in the right spot. I'm sure it'll always end up there, but I'm just saying that's another reason it does. But this is how you install a Dana 60, Dana 44, Dana... Yeah, I guess I think I might have said Dana 30 earlier. Dana 30 doesn't have this. Yeah, it did. Early yeah. Dana 30. What am I talking about? Jeep Dana 30? Yep. Yeah. So anything that has the you know dual wheel bearings like that, anything like that that has that, this is the kind of the seals you're gonna have on that. And you won't have bearing problems. The mud won't get in there, the water won't get in there. Mother Nature won't make her way in. Because like I said, the mud goes through the hole out through here around the axle shaft and then the water penetrates this bearing if any of you guys have these axles dana 44 9 inch combo bronco you know we all know if you have that and you keep having outer bearing problems and you're like how am i having outer bearing problems my lockout must be leaking it's not your freaking lockout dude it's the mud's coming through here and your spindle bearing's getting train wrecked in there <laughs> there's no grease in that guy it's just sitting in there just full of crap but again it took me four or five years of tearing my stuff apart before I finally figured it out. And where it all started was I took another friend of mine's apart and I go, what's that? And he goes, I don't know. It was a factory axle. Nobody was running these metal slingers. And that's what no. Greg's saying. He doesn't have it on one of his axles. That metal slinger right there uh, is the ticket to all this deal. If you don't have that guy, it's just as crucial as not having the bearing. It's just as important as anything. So. Today's video, why are your bearings going bad? This is probably why. How to install a bearing properly. That's how you install it. Tap it in there like normal if you do any other kind of bearing. Just make sure that it's not uh, too low. You can drive that thing all the way to the bottom and that seal will just slide right in there. You'll have all kinds of bottom problems, bearing problems. And then again, don't run this little plastic Delrin guy unless you're out west. Because if you order these, they're only 40 bucks. You'd think it'd be a great idea. So now we're going to install the spindle bearing. Yeah, he's going to tap the ins install the spindle bearing down in there. And that'll be it. If you tapped it too far, no one's gonna believe you that this is the right way to do it. I know. No, I haven't yet, that's why. So we're tapping this in. See how there's still a gap underneath this seal 
to this sill around the spindle. So we've got to push the bearing in a little bit farther. So you don't want to go too far. You want to check it as you go. And as you can see, like Jeremy said, it's still really proud. So we put this seal on, but there's still a gap around here. So you want that gap to be small, but not too small to where it won't seal. So we're going to tap this in a little bit farther. So now we've got this to the proper depth to where this is against the seal and you can't really push it down any farther so that's how you know when this is in there Yahtzee so that's how you properly install a Dana 60, Dana 44, Dana 30 whatever spindle bearing we'll just call it a spindle bearing with the seals and all that you gotta have all the junk to do it and if you ever watch this video make sure you tell your buddies that have them because most people don't know anything about them so like always, I'm Jeremy. This is Greg with Bleep and Jeep. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, and if you're a fan of the page, go to Patreon. Thanks, guys. Okay, your camera is a piece of shit. Keeps beeping and cutting off. Yeah, so we're going to change cards after this whole jazz. But either way, it doesn't matter. We're here working on shit while you're on the beach drinking. And we're yeah, not, you're in Belize, dude. Well, drinking free. Dr. Pepper. Bullshit. No, he's probably he's probably got a tap. Oh, that's I'd say, true. I'd say. That's he's true. probably like Ella, do whatever you want. Just don't play with the bottles. Yeah, the shampoo <laughs> bottles. Don't smoke whatever they handed you in a bag. Yeah. So, but either way, work on your junk. I don't know what time it is. Wish you weren't or wish you were here. It's almost look at that. 9.53. So, see you, buddy. Bye.